I feel that this country was built off of the backbone of the working class people and the farmers. And unfortunately, now we have no voice in Washington. It's the elitist and unfortunately, uh, the, the rural Tennesseans have been left behind. And I just have a real problem with that. Reopening rural hospitals, that seems to be your whole thing. It seems to be it what, what keeps you up. So my question is, how do we do it? Uh, how do we keep them open? Reopen the ones that are closed and keep the ones that are struggling well, open? Well, you've got to have someone that has knowledge about rural hospitals because they're run it's a totally different bear than running big facilities. And most of the people who end up buying these rural hospitals are companies that really have never been in the rural healthcare business and don't understand it. It's hard to buy a rural hospital if you don't have the support of the medical community because you have to have the support of the medical community to keep the hospital full. Unfortunately, Tennessee ranks second in the nation only behind Texas with rural hospital closures. And I anticipate this year that Tennessee will probably move up to number one because we have several more hospitals on the brink of closing, as you know. So what is the solution? Is it a private uh, free market solution or is it a government solution? No, I think, well, first of all, you've got to get the government out of it. The, the bureaucracy and red tape have taken six to eight months to open up a facility and get a Medicare provider number is ridiculous. And unfortunately, um, we've got to sp get the federal government out of it and then open it up to a free enterprise system. So that would be your goal as, yes, a, as, a, as an elected representative to, to get the government out of it. Um, so, so that would be your message to conservative voters that less yes. government is We've got to have less government involvement in businesses in general and more supportive involvement in rural areas uh, because once these rural areas lose their hospitals, they can't recruit any industry, nor can they recruit retirees. Thus, the community just dies on the vine. A little bit of my reporting, I've learned that Medi Medicare and Medicaid reimbursements, um, if you get those provider numbers, um, Medicaid reimbursements, that, that, uh, that doesn't cover the entire cost. So do you think maybe government should step up a little more to uh, meet the financial need of rural hospitals? Yes, most definitely. Obviously, uh, as you mentioned, uh, Medicaid, because Tennessee does not take the expanded Medicaid money, we turn away $3 billion a year, which is $3.65 million a day. Unfortunately, that's put a crunch on the rural hospitals as well as the big hospitals because you're only getting about 68 cents on the dollar. So we should expand? I think we should take the expansion, Medicaid expansion. Many conservatives see that as, as more government, taking the check from the federal government as being more government. I understand that, but it's our money that we pay in. It's our federal taxes that we pay in, so we need that money back to our rural facilities and let us run it. Well, and we're talking about Medicaid expansion. We're talking about ACA or Obamacare. I want to know how you feel about Obamacare. I think Obamacare done a couple of things good. I mean, it has good and bad I, I, agendas, just like everything else. The good thing about Obamacare is that it made a level playing field for every individual regardless. It says that, you know, if, if you've got a sickness or disease that insurance companies still have to insure you. They done away with the pre-existing condition, which I think they should have. Um, and a lot of uh, Obamacare, as you know, has been dismantled. But uh, what's left, I think, is still a decent system. Your goal of getting those federal dollars to Tennessee, helping rural hospitals and cutting red tape, would, would, those, would, would those goals be better served in the state legislature, since it's the state that won't take the, the check, the, won't expand Medicaid? Yes, I think it would be. Obviously, uh, the other thing that I would like to see, because you know Tennessee is ranked one of the top five eight states in the opioid addiction and opioid crisis, is look at legalization of medical marijuana. States that have done that have been remarkably successful uh, in reducing their opioid epidemics. So I think we need to legalize marijuana medically and use it for the treatment of chronic pain and let the tax dollars off of that, as well as taxing the pharmaceutical companies on their medication, not passing it on to the, uh, the, the taxpayers, but taxing them and take the money between the medical marijuana and taxing the drug companies and use that money to support rural health. That's my, well that highlights my question, the, the medical marijuana and the expansion of Medicaid, those are issues handled in Nashville. Do you think that your goals and what you want to do, you would be better suited for a job in Nashville than in D.C.? Well as you know, 
22 states have legalized it. Unfortunately, the federal government actually owns the patent, which is a unique on uh, medical on med marijuana in general. But as long as it's a federal law that prohibits the use of or the legalization of marijuana, it's got to be changed at the federal level, and thus states can regulate it. So uh, the seat you're talking about has uh, has a. The Senate has a lot going on right now, so let yes. me ask you about some national issues. Uh, well, let me start with this. The president has already endorsed Bill Haggerty. His, uh, Donald Trump Jr. is coming to Tennessee um, for a fundraiser. Um, I'm curious to know, not being the uh, presidential endorsed candidate, um, you know, how do, how do you get over that, and do you support the president's agenda? I support a lot of the president's agenda, as most people do. There are a few things I disagree with him on. But for the most part, I do support the president's agenda and think what he's doing has been good. Now, as far as the understanding of Hager being endorsed, I understand that. He is the political insider. He's the establishment guy. I realize that I am just the working class citizen out here. But at the same time, I'm the one that's being suffering and my people that live out in the rural areas are the ones that are currently suffering. Unfortunately, if you have a heart attack or a stroke uh, in these rural areas or even a car accident, you know, we talk about the golden hour in medicine for the last 30 years. And unfortunately, by the time EMS gets there and you get transportation to a bigger facility, um, that golden hour is gone. So the likelihood of survival is near zero. And we've had several patients die in our rural clinics because of this. Uh, how do you uh, view the president's uh, foreign policy decisions such as Iran, uh, Syria, North Korea? Well, I understand uh, where, the go where the president is coming from on an international agenda, but I'm here to talk about more of a local agenda. We need to be taking care of our people that live in this country first and foremost before we start taking care of everyone else in the country world. You said there are certain things you disagree with him on. Is it is a lack of um, country first? Is that one of the things you disagree with yeah, him on? Yeah, I do. I think, that, I think that Americans should come first and foremost uh, in all policies and procedures with our federal government. I think we need to take care of our own before we take care of others. Um, I'm a Christian. Uh, I do believe that it is our, God, our God's responsibility given to take care of everybody, but again, I think we need to take care of all the people in Tennessee and America first before we start taking care of all these other foreign countries. Right now, um, if, if you were in the Senate, you would be undergoing an impeachment trial, and there's a question right now about whether or not to allow witnesses. Um, would you support uh, uh, voting to allow new witnesses into the trial, or would you uh, vouch for the uh, speedy, speedy trial? I really, I mean, obviously I've paid a little attention to that, but the impeachment process to me is totally, I mean, that's all our government's been focused on the last eight months. And unfortunately, the American people are suffering. You know, our health care system is broken, not only in Tennessee, but in America. People are having to pay extremely high premiums. Most people which can't afford these premiums are going without insurance and showing up in hospitals and emergency rooms and building up tens of thousands of dollars in bills, most of which can't pay them, and it puts the hospitals in near bankruptcy situations. And then in addition to that, I think that we have got to support our American farmers again because they are the backbone of this country. And, you know, we, uh, we've opened up the meat market, meat cattle prices to Brazil and uh, Australia and uh, letting them to bring their meat in here and uh, Argentina and it's drove our beat prices down. Our farmers can't compete. I think we need to we need to get back to taking care of our people and taking care of business and and this bureaucratic fighting whether it's Democrats, Republicans or whatever you know these people go up there to represent the people and they forgot what their job is. The job is to be taking care of the American people and the states that they represent and in doing so get beyond all this bureaucratic processes and create red tape and start taking care of our citizens in our country first. I believe that we need to obviously also provide better services for our military. We need to give our military better training and better equipment. I totally agree with that with the president. I also am a very strong supporter and believe that the vets should be taken better care of than what they're getting now because currently 
they have to drive sometimes two to three hours to doctor's appointments in big cities. I think that each individual veteran should be able to see their primary care doctor in their rural towns and we should be reimbursed for taking care of those individuals because we know their needs more than anybody does. But I think that the people of Tennessee are ready for change. They want somebody that's going to go up there and make a difference for Tennesseans instead of going up there and just being a part of the political process.